First off, my name is Giovanni. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Um, I've been building in Web3 since 2015. I've been an engineer for about 16 years now. Um, and this is my favorite place to be, honestly. Okay, so today, I'll be talking to you about the Agoric Orchestration API and what you can do with it that enables some interesting superpowers that you didn't previously have. So if you want to find me on social media, it's just my first name, pretty easy to find. Okay, clicker. All right, so what is Agoric? How many people here have never heard of Agoric before? Okay, good, wow, amazing. Well, one, two, okay. So for those, uh, Agoric is a layer one chain built on Cosmos SDK. Also developers on Agoric, they write their smart contracts in JavaScript, but it's a secure version of JavaScript. And so also, you could think of Agoric as an orchestration platform as well. And so the problem space that we're tackling is a subset of this chain abstraction space that you hear a lot about. And so together we're trying to push forward a standard for orchestration and you'll kind of see what that seems like today. But this multi-chain seamless interactions, this is a key part and you'll see why. So let's start with a simple problem. And actually I have a gift for someone who can answer this question. So let's start with a use case. So I have um, Tia that is staked on Celestia and I want to, let's say there's an airdrop on Stride that I want to participate in. So, what I want to do is I want to take that TIA and I want to liquid stake it on Stride. How many transactions do I need to approve as a user to do this? You sh shout out an answer. You can't. 20. Who said 20? Okay, wrong. Next. Shout out an answer. Okay, interesting. One more. Okay. We'll give it to the person who was the closest. So first, I have to undelegate this TIA, right? So I have to sign a transaction there. Then what I have to do, this is key, and you're going to see why, I have to wait 21 days now. That's a long time. On other chains, it can be 14, depending on what chain it is. So then I have to send an IBC transfer over to Stride. That's going to require another approval. Then, lastly, uh, now I'm actually going to invoke the custom functionality on Stride to liquid stake it. And as you guess, that's going to be another, <laughs> I know you were right, you said, well, you said 20. Somebody said five. Who said five? Okay, I'm going to just believe you because no one else said them. <laughs> so, as you can see, the problem is the UX here is cumbersome. And I'm not going to say it's by design, but it is a ramification of the complexities of the space. So, how Agoric is helping solve this is here you see a user is going to sign one transaction, one signature. And what's going to happen is Agoric has this notion of a long-lived contract. And what this means is that it's a contract that is running on this chain waiting for invocation. But it's also communicating with external entities, in this case, other chains, that are all asynchronous calls. So what the contract is going to do is the contract is going to make an invocation to a chain and await the acknowledgement to come back. And then it's going to make another invocation to another chain, in this case, Osmosis, and it's going to wait for the acknowledgement to come back. And then the last thing it's going to do is it's going to invoke this third chain, Celestia, and wait for an acknowledgement to come back. But two key parts here. One transaction, and this long-lived process here is spanning multiple blocks. That's key. So just, for, just to get this out the way, these are three keys that you want to take away here. So on Agoric, you have this notion of multi-block execution, ace, and it's native, native async multi-block execution because we're, we're tapping into the power of JavaScript, real JavaScript. And then also, you have this notion of on-chain timers. So this notion of having an, a timer sitting on-chain is a native feature here. And the last thing I mentioned before, you have this reactive contract. And this reactive contract is just waiting for invocation from these async processes. Okay, so that's the non-technical part. Let's look at some code. So this is, I'm gonna walk you through the API surface itself in 10 minutes. Okay, so the first thing. You have this notion of an orchestration account, and you have a subset, well, you have two subsets here. You have a remote account, which is gonna be an interchain account, and you have a local account, which is gonna be an account sitting on Agoric. Okay, so first thing, here you have this notion of, you see this orc, this orc object here. We call this an orchestrator. And so what you do is you use this orc, orchestrator here to invoke this get chain method on this orchestrator. And you're passing in one parameter, which is going to be the chain name. 
as long as Agoric knows how to map this chain name to an actual chain and its metadata, this is going to return for you a chain object. And so here, on line two, five, and eight, you see that we're getting these three different chain objects. So now let's see what we can do with them. Also, a key to take away here is you're going to see this usage of JavaScript asynchronous behavior, meaning await, all throughout all of these slides. And this is, we're not doing any trickery to use this await. What's happening is this is real JavaScript. This is a real promise being resolved, just like you would in regular JavaScript. Okay, so remember on the last slide, right, we, we're creating the Osmosis chain object, Cosmos Hub, and Agoric. So in this, what we're doing is now we're using these, right? So the first thing is, see on line two, we're creating an account. And on line five, we're creating an account, both on two different chain objects, to give us this Osmosis account and Cosmos Hub account. And then on line eight, we're creating an Agoric account. But there's a difference here. The, uh, the, the accounts, the orchestration accounts on line two and five, those are remote chain accounts, remote orchestration accounts. And then on line eight, that's a local orchestration account. But the interface to create them is the same. But they behave a little differently. So one other thing we can do now, now that we have these orchestration accounts, is we can, for example, get the address of these in our contract. And notice that we don't have to await this because this is a synchronous call, okay? This is when things start to get a little interesting. So here you see that I'm invoking this get balance method on this osmosis account. And I'm passing in this denom, you osmo. What's happening underneath the hood, which is why we have to use await, is this is actually sending an interchain query to this remote chain to fetch the balance here. Anybody not know what an interchain query is? Okay, good. So, one other thing we can do that's useful is we can use this orchestrator that you saw a few slides ago, and we can get a chain object for chain A, whatever it is, and then we can invoke get chain info on that chain A, which will give us information like the chain ID is uh, interchain queries enabled and the staking tokens. And that becomes useful for things that we may want to do in our contract, like if you want to um, take advantage of chains that have multiple staking tokens. Or there's a bunch of things there, right? But another key thing here is not every chain may have interchain queries enabled. So if you want to do something where you're orchestrating across many, many chains, this may be important at runtime. Okay. Now let's do something a little more interesting. So here you're seeing me use this notion of chain hub here, and I am invoking this get connection info. What that's going to give me, some of this may look familiar to you, this is going to give me the counterparty information and the transfer channel information for the IBC connection between those two chains. And so you, if you notice on line two and three, the parameters I'm passing in are two different chain IDs. And as long as those two different chain IDs have chain connection information, then you can fetch this data. But now let's do something a little more interesting. So here on line two, I'm, I'm getting the address for a previously made osmosis account, a remote orchestration account. And then on line five, I'm invoking this dot transfer method on this Agoric account. So remember, the Agoric account is a local orchestration account, and I am literally uh, triggering an IBC transfer to the osmosis address that I fetched before. And this give dot stake, this is simply me referencing assets that I give to the, to the contract through a transaction. And on line eight here, what I'm doing is I'm now instructing, notice on line five, I'm awaiting for that IBC transfer to succeed. Then on line eight, I'm instructing the osmosis account to now stake that, val that asset that I send to a specific validator. And this is happening in line, right? There's no magic happening here. This is literally in line. So now this is the reverse. What I'm doing here is I am undelegating first, and then I am iterating over the delegations and I am sequentially sending an IBC transfer to a specific destination. But this is not in parallel. Here I'm doing it in parallel just by take, making use of native JavaScript functionality with promise.all, right? And so what I'm doing here is after we do the undelegate, I am now in parallel sending two different IBC transfers. But the key to take into account in this slide and the one previously is line number two is awaiting for how many days? 14 days in this case because it's osmosis. So it's a 14 day promise I'm waiting to resolve. So here, what I'm doing is I can deactivate and reactivate remote orchestration accounts, which are interchain accounts, which may be useful if you're doing some large scale account management stuff, portfolio management, et cetera. And so this, what I'm doing, 
what I removed here is the function signature up top. But what's happening here is I'm building off of the building blocks I just showed you. So three through six, we're creating chain objects. Seven through nine, we're creating accounts. 10 through 12, we're getting addresses. 13, we're depositing these assets I give to the contract into this local orchestration account. Then I'm doing an IBC transfer from the orchestration account, from the local orchestration account to the remote. And then I'm staking the asset at the end, all in one function by making use of regular JavaScript and the orchestration API. Take a picture of that if you're interested, okay. Three, two, one, all right. Okay, so now this, let's say you want to invoke a chain that isn't natively supported by the orchestration API. This is interesting. Over the next three slides, you're gonna see me use this dot execute encoded transaction call here. What's happening here, if you look in the GitHub Cosmos SDK module for Osmosis, what you'll see is the message type itself has these parameters for this message swap exact amount in. Sender, give me the routes, the token in, and then the token out minimum, minimum amount. And so what you can do is you can, if the chain is connected to Agoric, or if you wanna connect to yourself on a local uh, Agoric uh, network or node on your computer, what you can do is you can just go to the chain's GitHub repo and find the structure of this message and send an arbitrary message to that custom, to that chain to evoke custom functionality that the API is not supporting to you out the box. So this is super extensible. So here I'm using the same thing, in co uh, execute encoded transaction, to invoke a Cosmwasm contract on another chain, right? <laughs> on another chain, and I'm passing on line six, I'm passing in the actual function that I'm expecting to call with its um, expected parameters, and on eight, this is the optional funds I can attach to this Cosmwasm call. Once again, and this chain doesn't have to be natively supported by the API. Okay. Last thing here, what I'm doing here is I'm invoking the liquid stake message type on the, uh, on the um, strides chain, and I'm passing in the, the parameters that it expects, creator, amount, and host enum. And here, this is an IBC, IBC representation of you, Adam. This actually, uh, on a previous account, I'm using an IBC representation of you, Adam, too, so I'm just using it twice. But what I'm doing here, oh, wait, last thing. In all three cases, notice on line 17 here, I'm invoking this on the remote orchestration Osmosis account. On line 12 here, I'm invoking this on a remote orchestration account. And on line nine here, I'm invoking this on a remote orchestration account just for stride. But the point is that I'm invoking this custom chain functionality without needing that, that API or that chain to be natively supported by the orchestration API itself. So you can use this to do some really cool experimental stuff. Making sense? Okay. All right. And so this is just a summary of the currently existing APIs that exist on the orchestration API, but this will grow over time. We're already doing some interesting stuff to reach out to EVM, et cetera. Um, one interesting thing that we're doing is, for example, a little alpha, we're working with Secret right now to implement this private DeFi strategies implementation where you have a private contract on Secret and you have an orchestration contract on Agoric, and they're working together so that you as a DeFi entrepreneur can put your private strategies in a private contract, but the orchestration contract is literally talking to the contract on Secret to get a decision on whether or not it should carry out some implement some strategy, but the public never knows the strategy itself. But what's cool about that is you have the option to now trade something secretly or privately on secret or reach out to other chains to do something. Um, and it, depending on how you use these orchestration accounts, you can start to do some mixing, you can start to do some interesting stuff. I won't go too deep into that, but that's in the works. And I will say one more thing. I'm giving a workshop to go way more in detail in this in about an hour and a half upstairs. So if you wanna go deeper than just this high level stuff, please come see me. And uh, if not, you can find me on social media and you can always go to gork.com slash orchestration, come to our office hours we do on Discord, read our docs, all of the good stuff. Thank you for attending. Any questions that you have? Okay, thank you so much.